Psalm of the Divine Shepherd, Psalm 23. Shall we read Psalm 23 together again? Psalm 23. Let's begin reading. A Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me by the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I thou fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May God bless the reading of his infallible, sacred, preserved word. So yesterday morning we considered the first verse, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We considered the characteristic of sheep. We considered how the sheep needs a shepherd. And how do we know? We can say like the Saviour, say like um, the Psalmist David, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Well, the test is whether we are satisfied with our Saviour. Or are we putting our trust in everything else except our Saviour? We still feel like we are in want. The sheep feel safest, most secure when the shepherd is near. When he knows the shepherd is near. And that is all that the sheep wants. It's contented because it feels safe, secure. So that is what we considered yesterday. Is the Lord your shepherd? That was the question. If you're not saved, the Lord, the covenantal Lord, that covenantal relationship has not even begun in your life. We searched that out yesterday. But for those of us who are believers, is the Lord truly your shepherd? That is what we considered. Today we want to look at at why must the Lord be your shepherd? Why do you need Him? Why is it so important that you need the shepherd, and not just any shepherd, but the Lord to be your shepherd? That is what we want to, by God's grace, consider today. Look at verse 2. Here, the shepherd, David, who used to take care of sheep, who knows what the sheep needs, who also has a shepherd heart. Now, he says... <clears throat> As a sheep, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. We must never miss the point of Psalm 23. It is a very personal psalm. We saw yesterday, the word I, me, mine occurred 17 times. It is very personal. When you and I read this psalm, we can't be like, oh, this is another funeral psalm, and then our, our minds go wandering. Well, this is a very precious psalm. King David, the psalmist, writes about his personal relationship with his God. And being a shepherd, he knows the characters, characteristics of a sheep. Now, why would he say, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside still waters. This is what my shepherd would do in shepherding me. Now, there's one thing that we we ought to know about the characteristic of sheep. Like I said yesterday, most of us, well, at least for those who live in the city, we rarely come across sheep. We do not <coughs> live with sheep. We don't really know their character. One thing about sheep is they are quite foolish, quite silly. They get distracted. They go their own way. The Lord has himself said, we all like sheep have gone astray. That is one of the characteristics. We, we tend to be foolish people. And here... The sheep, one of the most pitiful sight, one of the most um, sad sight, is to see a sheep on its own out in the wild, out in the wilderness, without a shepherd. It's a very sad sight. In fact, um, a sheep without a shepherd would likely not survive very long. Even if it does, it won't be in good health. Now, the sheep themselves, here, there are two things that the shepherd says, uh, 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 the, sh uh, the psalmist David says, the shepherd does. One is bring it to green pastures. 
to lie down there. Another one is to bring it by still waters. Now, why green pastures? Why still waters? Now, sheep themselves, from what I can find out and read, they don't seem to have very good perception. They are not colorblind, as some would think. They have very low perception of um, colors, of um, um, preciseness. This discernment is not very sharp, not very good. So, whatever it finds, it can't really tell. Is this it is safe food, it is good food, it is proper or not, it will just eat. It will just eat what it sees. Now here, this green pastures is about grass or herbage that is fresh, that is safe, that is young, that is nutritious. See, a sheep without a shepherd would just walk around and see what it sees, it will eat without guidance. If there's poisonous weed, it will not be able to discern, it will likely just eat, 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 eat. Before it knows it, it's going to fall sick. If not, it might even die. It's a very sad sight. Very dangerous. Because of the lack of the ability to discern well by itself. By itself. And what about still waters? Why, why still waters? As we often hear and we understand, sheep are very timid. Easily frightened. Now, if you bring it by waters that are running, the brooks or, or streams that are running, the water will be noisy, rushing, gushing, strong. The sheep will not go near to drink because it's afraid of the sound. It gets frightened very easily. So the shepherd, in order to get it to drink, he will have to bring it to waters that are calm for it to drink there. Otherwise, you just keep going thirsty. Rather be thirsty than to be frightened. But yet again, you look, it's... It's still waters, by all thinking, we would think still water seems to be not very clean, right? It's running water that keeps washing away things that are unclean, but still waters, still waters. In our minds, still waters would be like the puddles that you see after the rain, uh, full of mud, and maybe um, after some time, there's infestation of germs and bacteria and all that. It's not any still waters, but it's still waters that are safe for the sheep, if it has a shepherd, if it has a shepherd. Otherwise, the sheep will just go, I avoid the noisy water, I'll find this, oh, still water. It could be full of filth and dirt and, and it will just drink from there without a shepherd. It is very dangerous. That is why to see a sheep going around by itself without a shepherd, to lead it to places where the grass is safe to eat. It's not only safe, it's nutritious. It's good for the sheep. Safe. Also safe from wolves. Safe from predators. Safe places. Or bring it to waters that are clean, that are, that are healthy for it. Without a shepherd, that's not going to happen because sheep by themselves are foolish. Low discernment, can't tell. There's one verse that I would like us to refer to. It's Mark chapter 6, verse 34. This will give us the Lord's own perception. Mark chapter 6, verse 34. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep, not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Now here the Lord himself describes how it is to see sheep. When you and I, we, if we were without a shepherd, even when the Lord saw them without a shepherd, his heart was moved with compassion. It's the most pitiful sight, the very sad sight. The sheep will not survive for very long. Even if it does survive, it will be a sickly sheep. Now, this is what happens to us, my friends, when we do not turn to our Savior as our shepherd. The problem with us is many of us turn to everything else as our shepherd rather than our Savior. We saw yesterday, if we put our trust, if we put our security, if we put our 
um, contentedness in anything else but the Lord. When those things are gone, we would feel insecure, we would not be happy. But today, it is more than that. It is far more than that. We are in danger when we are, when we turn away from our shepherd, when we fail, when we refuse to be under his shepherding. David says, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is the one shepherding me. When we turn away, we expose ourselves to danger and we don't even see ourselves. Very often, we are like that. We are like that. We are pitiful. We are covered with mire and mud. We are taking in all sorts of filth from the world without discerning. We take in, we eat all sorts of things. We are sick. We are dirty. Pitiful sight, but we don't even realize that. I know for the young people, mass media, actually I would say, actually now for everyone, mass media is a great reach, incredible reach into our minds. We don't have to travel far away to get anything, find out anything, look at anything. We just need one click and we are able to get all the information. We immerse ourselves when we take in all sorts of things. And if we do not, make sure that the Lord is the one that is guiding all our thoughts, our thinking. We will be without discernment and whatever we take in is going to start making us sick, is going to start making us um, eventually even die in our spirit in the sense of we have no more love, no more life, no more zeal for the Lord. And all these things are taking us up. We just take without discernment. How do, how do we get discernment? We'll see more of, more of that tomorrow, God willing. The main thing, the Lord is my shepherd. means He is the one I listen to. He is the one that I follow. Whatever He says, I believe. That is truth. I believe it. That is how the Lord is shepherding us. It is not, we sit there and then we imagine or we ask someone, what do you think, what do you think, what do you, I think? And then after that, alright, this is what it should be. No, the Lord is my shepherd. It means we, are, we need to believe that when the Lord says, these are green pastures. Yes, Lord, these are green pastures. I notice that very often we serve the internet. Or we have a question, we serve, 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 serve. I'm not saying that the internet is useless. There are lots of good information. But if we don't apply wisdom, we seem more to wanting to know what everyone's view is then Okay, then my view is also this or that. My friends, we need the Word of God to be that which says this is it. This is green pastures. And then we say, yes, this is it. I believe it. Even though you're, you're looking at it as a sheep, your discernment is not so good, but the, my shepherd says these are green. Safe to eat. All right, I believe this. Safe water is the same. My friends, we are taking in all sorts of things day after day, we must exercise discernment. And our safety is in the Lord. Our safety is in the Lord. So now we, we look at another area. Look at the next verse. Verse number 3. He restoreth my soul. He restoreth my soul. Now what is this restoring of the soul? Now the sheep, as this is written by a shepherd familiar with what the sheep does. Now it is said that the sheep themselves, especially those that have been eating a lot, they, they grow and they grow and they grow, their wool are very heavy, and they wander around and then they trip and then they fall over for whatever reason. Very often they are not able to get themselves up. They will actually find themselves just lying in a field somewhere out there. Very often the legs maybe facing sky or sideways, and very soon, their feet will turn cold because the blood keeps flowing away from it. Two things will happen. Number one, it will either eventually die or it will be eaten. It's easy prey, eaten by predators, by wolves, by whatever, predators, bears, because it can't help itself. It's, it's just lying there. What a shepherd will have to do now, the sheep without a shepherd, that's what's, what's happened to him. But what the shepherd does is, ah, another sheep gone astray, missing. He will seek it out. And when he finds it, he said, that, that is that silly sheep again. And then he will rub its feet, rub, 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 and try to get the blood flowing. And after that, it will yank the sheep up and get it upright again. 
and it's safe again, it can move again. Otherwise, it's just lying there, basically inviting the prey to eat it. Even if it doesn't freeze to death eventually, starve to death eventually. Now that is how it is. And that is how the Lord looks at us and says, You, well, sometimes we read, He restores my soul. We, 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 we may be thinking, Oh, it is about uh, God gives me good health, God, God gives me good rest, good sleep, and all that. Well, physical health, rest, and all that, yes, those are important. But here, particularly, it is referring to our spiritual restoration. Now, friends, if you do not have the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, I said yesterday, He's not your covenantal Lord. He is not your shepherd. You need to turn to Him and the most important restoration that you need, you can't save yourself. You need the Lord Jesus to truly be your Savior. That is the only way your soul can be restored. But you see, believers, for us, we ourselves go astray, we trip, we fall. We need the Lord to restore us. Do you want to keep living in a backslided state? I don't want, I don't want the Lord to restore me. You just keep holding on to sins which the Lord has told you, yet that is sin, and you just want to mask your conscience. I, I just want to go on like that. The Lord will come. The Lord, you have to let the Lord restore you. At this point, I want us to note. Now, God says, He maketh me. He leadeth me. It gives the impression that the impression that actually the sheep doesn't want. The shepherd must do it. He must get it done for us. He must lead us. He must make us lie down. The sheep doesn't like to lie down. The only way is when the sheep is full, when it's contented, when it feels safe. And in green areas, safe areas green pastures. So the Lord will have to do that. The Lord will do that. If not for ourselves, we will keep going astray. We will refuse. We are silly. We are foolish. We will choose all the wrong things and want all the wrong things in our lives. The Lord is my shepherd. Is he truly your shepherd? Number one. Number two, when the Lord begins to deal with you and I, how do we respond? And that is tomorrow's message. Today, the first day is about is the Lord truly your shepherd? Today is about why we must have the Lord as our shepherd. Tomorrow is when the Lord is our shepherd. How are we supposed to respond? That is what we want to know. But for today, let's focus on the shepherd. With, the sheep without a shepherd is exposed to danger. Is all the time wandering and apt to get lost, apt to eat the wrong things, take in the wrong things, fall sick. That is why many of us are spiritually so weak, so sick. Now we look at the next one. Here he says, He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. In verse 3, He leadeth me. Again, the word leadeth. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. So first we have the Lord making sure that we are safe. In fact, this word, in verse 2, He leadeth me beside still waters. And this word, He leadeth me in paths of righteousness. righteousness. There are different lead, different words. In verse 2, it has the connotation of protection, protection, safety. But in here, verse 3, it is about guidance, guidance. So not only, well, King, the shepherd David would know very well, the shepherd not only feeds, not only protects, but the shepherd will lead, it will guide, it will guide. We need that, we need that. He said, he leadeth me how, leadeth me where? In the paths of righteousness. Now, this is not just physical leading and all that. It is truly about a spiritual leading in paths of righteousness. The, she the sheep must be led. It must be led. Yesterday, I shared that truly in our dorm, there is no want, no lack, no lack. And very soon, we, we realized yesterday afternoon. A lot of sheep came <laughs> to the to the front of the of the dog. It was it was we felt like we were being raided. <laughs> Literally. Everyone was I saw a whole big group walking past. I thought, well they were on their way to watch the sheep shearing. 
led by you know the the owner of this place his son and then on the way actually everyone came this way because they wanted to stop at the chalet and then very soon the cupboards were open the food well everyone was having a great time we follow very quickly all right we follow the sheep following 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 that is one of the characteristic of sheep all right it has a tendency to just follow also you have a bad shepherd, it follow. It will follow. In fact, it's very timid, it's fearful. It, it will huddle together. Sometimes the shepherd will have trouble moving it. But once the shepherd moves, one follow, then the rest will follow. They will keep following, like yesterday, right? <laughs> or just follow, one come in, oh, everybody come in. <coughs> yes, good. The, um, you, you will follow leading. The question is, who are you following? Yes, good. You want to be fed, but what are you eating? All you guys came in, all you ate was sugar, 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 sugar. <laughs> all right? We don't deserve, we just eat, whoa, chocolates, whoa, chips, whatever. We just wallop. But actually, I think the adults were the wiser ones. Very soon, they moved off. The teens never moved off. <laughs> the teens just stayed there. Yes, that's how we are. We, we, we just eat what we like and when we just follow. I mean, the paths of righteousness, we need. We are foolish, we are wayward, we, we, we tend to choose that, that is what we simply like, not paths of righteousness. Paths of righteousness will not be easy. You see, the shepherd will be looking. And I was watching this, um, like I say, I, this, I do not know much about sheep, I have to watch videos of sheep. And this one shepherd led about 1,000 sheep. 1,000 sheep, just one shepherd. Well, he has a few helpers at the, at the back, but... He would go through mountainside. In fact, it's, every, it's a yearly event. He would go through mountainsides, dangerous places, edges, and the sheep will follow. The sheep will follow. He always feels safe with the shepherd. He hear his voice, as we said yesterday. Any other voice? No. But this shepherd, he will follow. And this shepherd, they interviewed him after that. He said, oh, why do you take this route? It looks dangerous. He said, oh, you do not know about the other paths. The other paths are full of bears, full of wolves. This is the safer path. You know, sometimes paths look difficult for us. It looks, it doesn't seem to be what we want. We want to choose another path. Hey, that path is full of greenery. Why don't we go that way? Flat ground. But lurking behind could be the bears, the wolves, watching, waiting. The shepherd knows the paths of righteousness. The path where it will keep you safe. The path where you will walk righteously before him. You will not fall into sin. So my friends, I hope by now we see the picture of a sheep without a shepherd. Now this is a personal psalm. You personally, is, is the Lord truly your shepherd? Are you truly allowing Him? He makes us. Are you truly following Him? Or do you keep wanting to be foolish? Keep doing the same thing over and over again? Refuse the shepherd's leading? You and I must know we have poor perception. We have poor discernment. We must know that. We are people who like to follow. The world says this. The philosophy of the world says this. This is the way how you live. This is what, what uh, you should be in life. We just simply, yes, that is how. We are followers. Like foolish sheep. Foolish sheep. We are followers. That is our tendency. We huddle together. We feel safe huddled together. But once one sheep hear the voice, they follow. We follow too. It is, the sheep always feel safest, like I said yesterday, when the shepherd is around. No matter what it's doing, when the shepherd calls, even it's eating the best green, and green grass, the most delicious, when the shepherd calls, it looks up. And then it will just prance to the shepherd, making happy noises. It will leave. It will leave. Because its joy, its safety is in the shepherd. He knows if the shepherd calls, I'm following, I'm going, I'm leaving this, even if it looks good to me now, because I trust my shepherd. Now here, the Lord promises that green pastures, green pastures is where he will bring us. Do you believe that? Do you trust that? Do you believe that where the Lord will lead you is always the safest, the greenest, the best? I tell you, I've turned off my phone this happened to me in, um, in Melbourne. I turned everything off. 
and it still rings. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dr. Quack is going to give me a lashing after this. <laughs> This happened to me exactly in Perth, I, uh, in Melbourne, I turned it entirely off, but it still goes off. <laughs> I don't know if um, someone is in trouble. Yesterday someone was calling me, I turned it off. When it's supposed to ring, it didn't ring. Someone was lost. So, we must fully understand that we have a tendency to go on our own way and all, but the Lord says, this is the safe place. My friends, where are you now today in life? Are you in some areas that you, you just say, I actually don't like this place. But you know in your heart, God has led you there. But you begin to say, no, I want to move out of this. Don't move unless you truly know it's God's will. Because where God puts you, that is the best place. That is the safest place. You may not see it now. You may not understand it now. But... The Lord is your shepherd. Trust Him. How do you trust Him? How can you have trust in such a shepherd that I look over there, hey, but it looks nicer, greener there, right? Yesterday we went to feed the sheep. It's strange, right? They have green grass in there. I mean the animals there. They have green grass on their side of the fence. And then we bring dried grass. We even bring weeds. They'd rather eat our weeds than the, and the dry grass than all that green grass there. Why? For us, the same. Grass always greener on what? The other side. We keep looking, but trust, this is green pastures for us. What do you eat, my friends, every day? What do you feed on all the time? Are you constantly just feeding, on, feeding off the internet? Or are you making sure that you are at where the Word of God is taught, feeding on those things instead? Are you constantly with your friends, chatting about things of the world? We are worldly wise with everything. But to feed on God's word, we are not there. We are not there. Well, I thank God that you guys take leave, make it a point. Many of some others drive all the way up here. We want to be where there is the grass. We want to be there. We want to be there. The paths of righteousness. He leadeth me there. Difficult path. What path are you going through now? are the choices that you need to make, but you can only make the right choice. The Lord is my shepherd. It's not you sit there and then you start imagining what the Lord would do and then, oh, situations like that, situations like that. Ah, the Lord is leading me. No, the Lord leads us through His truth, through His perceptive will. We know, we know what to do. If we study His Word, we know His Word. The safest thing, when we say the Lord is my shepherd, He does this, all these things for me. How He does it, do it. How does He lead you? How does he bring you to safe places? Through his known word, through his scriptures, not dreams, not visions, not someone's um, wise counsel. Of course, there is wise counsel, but if the counsel dis disagrees with God's word, you'll be a sheep to follow God's voice in his word. When we begin to th really think that there is something we want so much, that is the green pasture. That is the water I want to drink. That is the path I want to walk. When I was, we, we will find ourselves in so much trouble, so lost, so filthy, so dirty, so despondent eventually. I had a colleague when I was a young manager. I had a colleague. And I look at his life, everything was great, fantastic. In fact, everyone looked at him and said, we want to have that life. He was a high flyer. The company looked up to him for everything. Oh, he, we would take his word, his direction. He was an excellent worker, very smart marketing mind. But one day after a meeting in, um, actually in Australia, one day after a meeting, the next day, we waited for him to turn up. Waited, 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 one hour, didn't turn up, two hours, didn't turn up. And a lot of senior managers were there. Three hours, didn't turn up. And we gave up, so we just went ahead with the meeting. And next thing we knew, the hotel tried to access his door. Next thing we knew, he committed suicide. Everything in life was look, looking perfect. He drank, filled the bathtub climbed inside and drowned himself. I think he was about 40 years old. Very successful. 
very capable. On the way, definitely up, up, up. But you see, he ended up making wrong choices in life. He ended up in adultery and drug problems. His life, his desire was all these things. And finally, when the woman he was with decided to leave him, and he's already have a broken relationship with his wife, he had nothing. He had nothing. To him, everything is over. To us, it's like everything looks so good. But to him, everything is over. That was the one thing that he wants so much. Adultery, whatever, sin. Ended up despondent. To him, if I don't have this, it's the end of my life. It's useless. And he committed suicide. My friends, we can look at life and say, this is what I want. This is what I must have. We work very hard. We would forsake studying of God's word. We would forsake the taking care of our families, we will forsake of everything just to pursue this one thing because that, if I don't have that, I'm in one. I don't have. Unless our Lord, unless our security, our happiness, our joy is fully just in the Lord. Like I said yesterday, the sheep, they hear the Lord's voice, they will just stop eating their, their green grass and run to Him. Unless we also learn that our joy is in the Lord, not these things. Not these things. When these things get taken away, to us it's the end of the world. And as believers, sorry, as unbelievers, you will not know. You will come to a stage where you will be despondent. You want to just take your own life. Because what you want is nothing. It's God. But only the Lord Himself can truly, fully satisfy what is, in, what is the true need in you. And when you have that, everything, your health, everything can be taken away, but you will still have that joy with the Lord. Safe and contented. Safe and contented. For believers, if you keep choosing, you keep wanting to go your own way, you, filthy, dirty, wandering around, and we think we are fine, we are happy, but we are in a pitiful, sad state. The Lord looks at us and He has compassion on us. He will work towards us. We must respond. How? How? How to respond? Now we know if we do not have this, do not have the Lord as our shepherd, we are exposed to all kind of dangers. If we have all kind of safety, all kind of health, that is what? But how? How would you and I, how should you and I respond to this shepherd? Yes, you say, now I understand I'm in danger, so I better follow. There's goodness with the Lord. How? How should we respond? How will He lead? How should we respond? By God's grace, we want to look at that tomorrow. The Lord is my shepherd. Is He truly your shepherd? The Lord is my shepherd. Why? You must know you're in danger. You must respond to Him. Let us pray. What do we have here? Top five reasons why church dropouts. Uh, what church dropouts say? Why they stop attending church. Now, please remember 66% of, well, I take the American view, um, they are the most readily available results. They stop attending church at least a year after turning 18. So from